um, the SQA helped solve some of the problems that you may have at school? I see SQA as a learning journey, as, as not a award. I, I, frankly speaking, in, in, in Singapore, I, I don't need now this award. People already know that we are good, right? So, we, but by going through that process, we learn a lot of things. First, we learn uh, that we are good at which area. So, which are our strengths? We also learn which are our areas for improvement. So, by going through that process, people see us from another perspective tell us hey this is you, what you're good at this is something that you should improve so what i can do is spend my resources to improve ourselves so the whole learning process we know ourselves so much better whether you win the award or not it doesn't matter to me so it happened that they give it to us so it's okay just take it it doesn't matter right so if you don't win it doesn't matter it is a learning process so schools that have reached that level usually will encourage them go for it you, you, you lose nothing, you will learn a lot and they get a team of highly qualified evaluators to tell you what to do to, to have that kind of consultancy you pay at least fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 for this group of people to come in to see your processes and tell you how good you are and how bad you are right? so why not, nothing wrong we lose nothing even if you don't win anything so to me SQA is a learning journey not so much about the award if you get the award, let's celebrate hey, tell yourself, hey, yeah, you're really good that's it, finish if you don't get, you learn, finish Yeah, that's my attitude good Lady there? Yes. Chat. Hi, uh, my name is Pat Nari, and thank you very much for visiting us today. Um, I have a question about strategic planning process. As I see that you have a five year model changing from exam focused to holistic education, for example. And I think that these changes must be very important and huge, that they often make a lot of impact to the school especially with a big school like yours. Um, I am very interested to know how the how process, how do you make these things happen? How do you get everyone on the same track? How to get people to believe in your vision and work in your model efficiently? Thank you. Okay, uh, strategic planning is a very, very tedious process. We don't just sit down and talk among ourselves. Uh, we have to read a lot of uh, uh, journals, we need to know what is happening in the world, right? what is happening around us, uh, what are the other schools doing, not only other schools in Singapore, we also want to find out what other schools in different parts of the world are doing. Right? Then we will know uh, uh, what direction is important and in Singapore uh, we also receive a lot of um, uh, reports from the government, uh, they will tell us okay, uh, in the next decade maybe uh, we need to produce uh, students who are good in science, technology, engineering, and so on. So that is also one particular direction we have to look into because as a school, we have to support the country. Right? So uh, we get information from different quarters. We sit down, the senior uh, team will sit down and discuss uh, what to do for the next five years. We are here, where else we want to go? Right? So once the key personnel decide uh, what uh, uh, the future direction, then we will cascade down, we will talk to students, we will talk to pa uh, parents, we will talk to teachers. Right? The whole process can be one, one year, it takes one whole year to chart the direction for the next five years. Right? Finally, my board will approve the uh, strategic plan. So it's a very long process. So by the end of the whole process, everybody knows, oh, this is the direction. Yeah. Okay. It comes from everyone. Yes, everybody must be involved. Everybody must feel the ownership. Everybody must uh, identify with that direction. Right? So, when, for example, when you say borderless learning, if the teachers don't believe in you, then there's no goal. Right? No, you, you will not be able to move forward. So the teachers have been consulted, the parents have been consulted, the students are consulted. So uh, policy making is, a, is not an easy uh, process. Uh, as I said, we take about a year or so to do it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next question from the audience um, related to um, um, she said that um, what she have heard, well, or it could be a he or a he, she, I don't know, <laughs> is that um, in Singapore is, is a very competitive society. So the students grow up with a lot of stress, um, especially in school. 
So how do you deal with that? Um, is that a problem at your school as well? And how do you, how do you resolve that? Yeah, just before I came, a reporter asked my teachers uh, the same questions. Right? So first of all, they make an assumption that uh, it's very stressful in, in school. Right? So I've just shown you the, uh, the data. Right? While we want our students to work hard and uh, achieve good results, we also find out from them whether they are enjoying the school life. That is the quality of school uh, uh, um, experience. So consistently, we have uh, 85 to 90 percent of our students they are very happy with the uh, quality of the school life. So that means these people are happy with what they are doing. Yes, they work very hard, but they they enjoy doing it. Right? If you do not give them that kind of uh, environment for them to achieve, in fact, they will be unhappy. Right. So this is a special breed of uh, students who are very, very ambitious. They want to do a lot of things. They want to go to the best university in the world, and they want to be the best in the best university. So that's the kind of student I have. Right. I just told my, my friend just now, uh, some of my students, I, I visit them in the uh, University of Pennsylvania. Right. Many of these people are taking double degrees. Right. There was a uh, time I visited them, I, I think after dinner, I asked them, uh, where are you going? That time was already about 9 p.m. I asked them, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the library. I said, ah, 9 p.m. is to go to the library. I said, uh, that's not too healthy. Right? So in fact, uh, I advised them, in life, there must be balance between academic studies, your, your career preparation, and also social life. Right? If, if I have my way, I will advise them not to take double degree. I, I will advise them to take single degree, plus the time that they have, they should do networking, social life, so that uh, yes, they have a balanced life. Right? So this is what I do uh, when uh, they are in my school. So in the school, uh, they are busy with the project work, they are busy with uh, studies, but at the same time, they have lots of uh, fun. There are lots of activities that bring uh, about joy. So every one month, every month, there are something on, so they, they are very happy people. They dance, they, they sing, so it's fine that uh, life is good. Right? Uh, but come to examination, yes, it's stressful, no choice. You just have to tell them, well, this is the most difficult exam in your whole life. After this, you're okay, uh, they will take it, they'll bite the bullet, they'll get, get through it. Which is true, right? In life, you're, you're, you just have to accept that they are difficult time, right? Whether it's uh, whether you are in adulthood or whether you are you are still a child, so there are ups and uh, downs in life. So just like financial crisis, everybody suffer, right? So you must be have you must have the resilience to to take all these challenges, right? If we were to make life so simple, so smooth for all the students, I think it's too artificial. Then these people will not be able to survive in life. Yeah, so. Let them experience it. Ups and down is uh, something part and parcel of life. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about tutoring? Do your students, or in general, do Singaporean students go to 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 do tutoring after school? Yeah. Uh, or is yes. that a big business? Um, but for my school, I we, I did a survey before. When they come in in secondary one, they go for tuitions um, for one subject that is uh, Chinese. Right? Because Singaporeans are very weak in Chinese. Right? Uh, when they come to my school, they have to take both English and Chinese as first language level. So, so very taxing. Huh? So uh, when they are in grade 7, they go for tuition for Chinese. Uh, when they come to uh, grade uh, 9, they will find mathematics become difficult. So some of them will take tuition in mathematics. Right? So these are the two subjects that uh, most people uh, take uh, tuition. Other subjects, no. In the first place, they don't have time to go for tuition because <laughs> there are so many activities in school. Right? And we also make it very clear to them that there's no need to get perfect score in order to do well in life. There's no need. You don't have to get nine distinction or eight distinction to, get to do well in life. You only need three distinction to go to the best university. And how you get into university also depends on your activities. What kind of uh, what, what kind of service learning project you have done? What kind of uh, uh, hobby do you have? Right? These are things that are uh, very important to them. Right? So therefore, we want them to have a balanced life. So we don't encourage them to take too many subjects. Taking too many subjects eventually does not help them in life. This is something that perhaps uh, you, end up, you may want to think about it. Right? For my students, they can easily take nine, ten subjects, but I told them don't bother. Right? because it doesn't help. In fact, uh, our government, who uh, I think the Public Service Commission is sending a very clear signal. 
They tell them, you, I don't need you to have too many A's. You only need to give me three A's, plus many other things. Things that can, can tell people that you are really good. Right? That means you are not just good at examination matters, but you are good at solving other problems, social problems, and so on. So those are the people who are highly respected. So leadership is important, service is important, and the, the student must spend time on uh, all these uh, uh, non-academic areas. Right? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Yuta Chai. From, I'm from Chiang Mai. I'm not from Bangkok. Uh, my school is bigger than you. <laughs> I, we have 6,400 for this semester. Wow. But I'm very, very pleased to have you today and I learn a lot from you. Uh, my question is, what is your vision and your policy about the student guidance in the school? Would you please share for us? Student guidance. Yes. Very simple. We want our students to lead with passion, lead with compassion. That is the vision that we have for our students. So we hope uh, students having gone through six years in our school, they have found their purpose in life, they, they have the passion. Right? With that passion, they will have a very happy life. But at the same time, we want them to lead with compassion because we want them to look after the next generation of Singaporeans. This is something that we were looking forward to. Yes. I think what he meant is the counseling program. Yeah, so counseling. Uh, the counseling program. At school, yes. Your guidance means counselling, yeah. so uh, you are referring to students who underperform. Yep. Ah, okay. So we, there, uh, there are two with, stages. With, um, problematic behaviors. Ah, oh, we do have. Uh, at the when students come in, we normally give them two years uh, to adjust to our school life. At the end of the secondary two, we will look at their performance, and if they underperform, we put them a special class. We call it the structured uh, IP program. So that uh, particular class, uh, uh, we 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 assign very uh, a group of teachers who are very very um, passionate about helping them. Very very. Uh, patient, right? So for one year, we observe them to see whether they should continue with the uh, the, um, the extended program. We call it integrated program. If we find that uh, the program is too stressful for them, they are un unable to do well. We put them in the O level class. This O level class, uh, we will prepare them for O level exam at the end of Sec four, just like any other schools in Singapore, right? And that uh, program is easier. For them to pass the examination is not the difficult uh, uh, process. So we help them to do well in O level. Uh, after O level, they will decide whether they'll continue to do A level or they go to polytechnic or they're going to do something else. So they have a lot of choices. Usually, uh, we have about 20 to 30 students uh, who need to be in that particular class. Uh, they are students who may come from dysfunctional family. For example, their parents quarrel, divorce, that kind of thing, they affect them. Uh, they, it could be students who are involved in boy-girl relationship. Right? So these are the things that we need to guide them. We need to counsel them. Right? So, and uh, there are people who are, who are parents who are very, very busy, so nobody guide them at home. They play a lot of computer games, uh, we do have. So every year, about 20 to 30. So after examination, all of them can go, can go on to the next stage. Right? So when, they, when I meet parents, I always tell the father, I say, you better love your wife, otherwise I have a problem. Uh, so dysfunctional family always give problem to the kids. Right? So this is something that uh, we, we send a clear signal to the parents. Uh, yeah. So and that, oh, I'm sorry, um, just to add to that, but don't go yet. Um, and that leads to one of the questions that um, from the audience. Um, do s does Singapore has a lot of moral um, problems in the society? Like for example, um, like the problems with the family creates problems, uh, other social problems? Not my school. My school is, I'm very fortunate, right? so I don't have that kind of problem. But I know in government school they are. So for example, when their parents are in prison, right? so kids are, they need extra help. So they are put in homes and so on. They are. Uh, and uh, a typical government school, I think they easily have about 10, 20, oh, very, very high risk students. Right? really difficult uh, for teachers to handle. They need specialists to come in to handle. Uh, so for my school, I don't have that yet. Uh, so, so far, I don't need specialists to help them. My teachers, uh, as long as I get teachers who are more patient uh, and to work with them, that's it, enough already. 
Yeah. And I also have boarding school. So for the for students who come from dysfunctional family where parents quarrel, divorce, I will take them out from the family and put in the boarding school. I get a group of teachers to look after them. So until they graduate and that's it. So they are usually okay after that. So the, it's good to have resources like this where we can look after them. Yeah. Yes. So um, what what is the this is the last question. What is the the ultimate aim of education of of your school? What ultimate aim is to enable them, empower them to serve the nation. That's it. They can do whatever they want. They can they can join army. They can uh, be a businessman. They can be a teacher. They can do anything they like. At the end of the day, they must bring benefit to the community. We respect those who serve the community. If my student can earn millions and millions of dollars and put it in their pocket and don't care other people, I say we fail. That's a good yeah. question. Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Lung Tik, for a perfect last question for today. I think that that is a very good last question. Yeah, we're thank doing you. perfect on time. Um, or would you like to have your last word? Um, leave us with something that for us to think about. Oh, one more. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, I take that back, Lung Tik. <laughs> hello, uh, sorry, last question was, but, sorry. Uh, hello, okay. Uh, hi, I am Nasreen. Whoa. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm Nasreen, uh, I'm from Bangladesh. Ah, Bangladesh. <laughs> I'm uh, in here, I'm a uh, fellow. I'm working for human rights education. So I have two questions. Uh, at first, I want to know about how uh, what about your student-teacher ratio? One to class? eleven. One teacher to eleven students. Uh, every class, one teacher and eleven students. Oh no, no. Uh, Student-teacher ratio is one to eleven, but the class size is about twenty-five to thirty. Okay. And second question is, what about human rights education in your institution? Human, human rights education. Human rights education. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. We are in between uh, Communist China and uh, USA. Do you understand me? Actually, uh, <laughs> I was thinking to human rights. We have some human rights values. Human rights values. Values, yes. Yes. Uh, which, which is very important for students, especially for mm. adolescent. Okay. So maybe you share with me your experience. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, we are working for human rights education in Bangladesh, just starting. So we are thinking that uh, with our government textbook, we want to review at first textbook review, and then uh, we want to find that how we can merge human rights values with our textbooks. So you I have any initiative? Or about human rights values. Ooh, we, oh, okay, uh, if I understand her correctly, uh, uh, she would like to know how do you teach human rights values to your students? Okay, human rights is a very big topic. Right? Yes, it's a very yes, big yes. topic. So uh, what we do is we use case study method to teach our students. Uh, for example, recently you have uh, uh, cases where there's an abuse of human rights, right? So we will bring all these case studies, uh, cases to the classroom and ask students to talk about it. Just now I mentioned to you a quick answer is the human rights, uh, as far as human rights is concerned, Singapore is in between China and uh, USA, right? We, we are not as free as, uh, as the US. We don't believe in that kind of absolute freedom, right? But we also do not believe in no freedom at all. So we are in between, right? So to us, everyone has a right to express their view, everyone has a right to, to do whatever they want, but they must believe in win-win, they must respect other people's right as well. So you cannot do something to infringe other people's right. So this is our fundamental value. So that's the reason why uh, one of our core values is win-win, make sure we respect one another. Uh, we will not allow students to, uh, to make fun of other people's religion. We will not allow our students to make fun of other people's culture. Right? We, we do not uh, really uh, identify with what the French people are doing. They, they upset the Muslim and so on. We don't believe in that. So we tell our students, don't do it. You must respect other people's practices. You must respect other people's culture. And uh, that way, people will respect you. So this world will be a peaceful world. To us, hum that's human rights. Respect your right. You also respect other people's rights. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.
And once again, I'm going to say this is a beautiful question to the end of the <laughs> to, to end the session. <laughs> what a way to end. All right, um, at this point in time, I would like to invite Professor Vijit Sizan to come up on stage, please, um, to express our appreciation to uh, your presence here at Yulai Longkorn University. Uh, we have a small token of appreciation. Um, I know that we do, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> Wow, it's not that small. I thought it's small, so I said a small token of appreciation, but it's actually pretty big. <laughs> Clap, please. <laughs> yes. um, I believe we have a set of books um, to give to Dr. Han as well. Yes. Um, this is a collection of every um, the lectures so next year, for the next speaker, we'll have Dr. Han's book on there. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And please stay on stage. Don't leave. Just, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Don't go yet. We're not done. <laughs> uh, at this point, um, I would like to invite um, Professor Prit Siliban Pitak um, to come up and to, um, as usual, every year, we present Professor which is his aunt with a flag of um, remembrance. Um, and this is the sixth time now. Tong Zhao. Yeah. The flag. And now I'm going to ask you to ask the question of the question of อ่าต่างๆนะครับขึ้นมามอบเอ่อชอบออกมาให้ท่านอาจารย์วิจิตนะฮะอ่าเอาจากสาขาเรา <coughs> ครับอาจารย์ฟื้นเลยครับฮะอาจารย์อาจารย์ฟื้นบริหารก่อนเลยครับอาจารย์เอาให้นิสิตฮะนิสิตไหว้ใช่มั้ยฮะเอาเหร
งั้นเชิญคณาจารย์นะครับทุกท่านนะครับแล้วก็ดรเจอรี่คุณจะได้ทุกคำมาบนสเตจแล้วเราจะกรุ๊ปโฟโต้กันครับอ่าถ่ายรูปหมู่ก่อนนะครับอาจารย์ปองศิลเชิญครับอาจารย์จำนงเชิญครับเชิญนิสิตท,ทุกท่านได้เลยนะครับบนเวทีเพราะมีที่พอทั้งหมดเลยครับมาหลดเลยปฏีมาด้วยลูกอาจารย์ครับเชิญด้วยครับอาจารย์อาจารย์แหววเชิญครับเดี๋ยวอย่าเพิ่งถ่ายรออาจารย์แหววด้วย
อันหนึ่งสองอขอท่ากดไลค์ด้วยหนึ่งสองเดี๋ยวนะสักครู่นะครับอาจารย์นะฮะเนื่องจากว่าจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยทุกปีนี้เราจะจัดงานนี้นะครับในเดือนเกิดของอาจารย์วิจิตนะครับแต่ว่าปีนี้เราต้องเลื่อนขึ้นมาเป็นเดือนมกรานะฮะเพราะฉะนั้นก็เราก็อยากจะ1 2 3 Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday to you and many more ค่ะดิสดิสเยสเอ่อเอดีเอดีเอดีวันเอ่อเอิร์ดเบิร์ดเดย์ออฟอาจารย์ดรวิจิตรสาร and we we gonna have another very special day for next year uh, in January uh, อาจารย์ช่วยกันด้าขึ้นมา No no you are not correct only 19 to 100 ปีหน้าเราจะมีครั้งที่7ปีนี้ครั้งนี้เท่าไหร่นะปีนี้ครั้งนี้ปีหน้าจะครั้งที่7นะครับเมื่อเมื่อกี้นี้ได้เรียนปรึกษาท่านอาจารย์แล้วปีหน้าเราจะมี public lecture นี่สุดพิเศษนะฮะส่วนจะเป็นเรื่องอะไรนั้นขอให้ติดตามแต่ที่แน่ๆก็คือจะเป็นโอกาสพิเศษจะไม่เหมือนครั้ง6ครั้งที่ผ่านมานะครับขอเชิญติดตามสำหรับมกราปี59นะครับขอบคมากครับครับขอบคุณมากครับขอบคุณนิสิตที่น่ารักทุกคนอ่ะ <laughs>